Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about the benefits of magnesium, as well as more importantly, how it interacts with the body and the biochemistry of magnesium once it's ingested. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome to Nutrition Library where we take an evidence-based approach to supplementation and wellness. If you haven't already or you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit that red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right guys, so before we get going, I do wanna let you guys know a couple of different things. One is that apparently a lot of you guys are super interested in compounds that are known to to increase and improve testosterone production. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I put together a fairly comprehensive list of all of the known compounds that are known to increase and improve testosterone production in men. And so if guys, if you're interested in that at all, go down to the description. There's a link that you can follow in order to download that. Another thing is that I am currently launching a private Facebook group so that you guys can have more direct access to me on a regular basis as well as thousands of other people across the globe that are pretty much supplement junkies trying to figure out what does work, what doesn't work, what they're taking, what they're stacking together for specific health goals. And so if you're interested in joining that, again, I am launching that this week. Uh, follow that same link that's in the description to download that hormone PDF. And with the email that is sent along with that PDF is going to be another link in order to gain access to this group. So guys, that's completely free. Um, and if you are interested in joining that, again, just follow the link below and you'll get there. All right, guys, so magnesium. All right, so magnesium is an essential dietary mineral that's most often found in dietary sources like green leafy vegetables, uh, legumes, and nuts. Now, it is estimated that roughly 70% of the U.S. population is deficient in magnesium. And one of the reasons for this is that the bioavailability of magnesium in the diet through uh, various food sources is relatively low and is estimated to be between 20 and 30%. Now, the reason for this is that magnesium is typically bound to a couple of different compounds known as phytic acid and oxalate. And now these are compounds that are found in plants that are typically bound to magnesium. And so that when you ingest that magnesium, um, your body is just essentially unable to absorb it. And this is really why supplementation with magnesium has become so popular. One, because so many people are deficient in magnesium. Two, because it's so difficult to get through dietary means. And then three, even the magnesium that you are getting through the diet, a lot of it just simply isn't absorbed. And so maximizing your dietary intake of magnesium through supplementation seems to be a relatively efficient way to, one, prevent deficiency in the first place, or two, to reverse deficiency once it happens. Now, when it comes to the mechanisms of magnesium, there are two primary mechanisms and essentially functions that magnesium plays in the body. And one is as an electrolyte and is one of the most important functions that magnesium plays in the body. Now, electrolytes are essential for both fluid balance in the body as well as nerve function, which is why typically when magnesium magnesium deficiency is in play in an individual, those are two of the primary symptoms that begin to arise. Now, the second function that magnesium plays in the body is as a cofactor to hundreds of enzymatic processes in the body. Now, one of the most primary and most 
functional uh, enzymatic processes that uh, magnesium helps to facilitate is glycolysis and now glycolysis is the primary means by which your cells convert glucose into ATP which is your primary and most fundamental form of energy in the body. Now when it comes to the role of magnesium as an electrolyte in the body its primary function is as an inhibitory ion that counteracts the effects of calcium on nerve cells. Now more specifically uh, magnesium is active on a very specific subset of receptors known as the NMDA receptors where it helps to counteract the effects of calcium on that same receptor. Now NMDA receptors for those of you that are not familiar with uh, the ins and outs of biochemistry are your primary receptors of the neurotransmitter glutamate. Now, glutamate is your primary stimulatory neurotransmitter in the body. Now, people typically think of things like adrenaline and dopamine when it comes to stimulatory neurotransmitters. However, glutamate is by far and hands down the most primary and abundant neurotransmitter and stimulatory neurotransmitter in the body. Now, glutamate plays an essential role in the formation of memory and just general stimulation. And when glutamate binds to the NMDA receptors, there is typically an influx of calcium into the nerve cell in order to potentiate the action of that nerve. And magnesium is kind of coupled on that same receptor in order to inhibit calcium from influxing into that nerve cell during times of no stimulation. And so what this means is that when there is low magnesium levels in the body or you are in a state of magnesium deficiency, that there's nothing on this receptor to keep calcium from just continuing to bombard the cell and enter the cell and influx into the cell. And so what you end up having is just a continual state of stimulation. Now, the reason this is a good thing is that it essentially raises the threshold that is required for a nerve to be stimulated. And the reason this is good is that in states of low stimulation, when a nerve or just when an individual in general is in a state of low stimulation, a state of relaxation, the nerves can actually reach a state of complete relaxation. However, once that threshold of stimulation is reached on that nerve, or that neuron, uh, magnesium allows that calcium to still get into the nerve cell in order to potentiate the nerve function. Now, another reason this is a good thing is that too much stimulation of the NMD receptor is actually neurotoxic. And so magnesium actually does a fantastic job in this role of protecting nerve cells from being overstimulated at the NMDA receptor and can improve the overall health of those nerves. Now, this leads us into our first three uh, primary benefits of magnesium. Now, we're going to talk about six benefits in this video. However, the first three are really what I'm going to kind of focus on. And then at the end of this video, we'll also talk about um, three very potent effects of magnesium, but nonetheless, are fairly well established in the literature and so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them. Now the first health benefit of magnesium that we're going to talk about today is improvements in mood. Now there are a handful of studies that have been uh, conducted in both uh, rodent trials as well as clinical trials that show a fairly high correlation between depressive and anxious symptoms and magnesium deficiency. Now, in this study in particular, like I said, there was a very high correlation between depressive and anxious symptoms and magnesium deficiency. But one of the interesting things about this study in particular is that when the participants that demonstrated those symptoms, when they were treated with 
um, some of the more classical pharmaceutical antidepressants that it fairly significantly increase levels of magnesium in the cell. Now, another thing that makes this study so interesting is that the, uh, the researchers in this study compared that treatment to dosing the same group with magnesium and they found that depressive and anxious symptoms were decreased to a fairly similar degree. Now, this has not been replicated in a ton of other studies, so I would take this individual study with a grain of salt. However, magnesium does seem to be fairly promising as, at the very least, an adjunct therapy to depression and anxiety. Now, the hypothesized mechanism here is that without the nerves in the body having magnesium to prevent this constant stimulation of nerve cells in the body, that there is just a continual state of stimulation that then leads to generalized nerve dysfunction. Now, the second health benefit that we're gonna talk about today is improvements in sleep quality. Now, this study in particular, as well as some rat studies that have also been performed, have demonstrated a fairly reliable ability of um, participants, individuals, and rodents that are magnesium deficient, that once you do correct that deficiency, that there is a fairly reliable improvement in sleep quality. Now, it isn't entirely clear whether or not magnesium has the ability to do this inherently, meaning that it's not super clear whether or not individuals that aren't magnesium deficient would benefit from improvements in sleep through magnesium supplementation. However, because of the sedative effects of magnesium, as well as its ability to regulate and attenuate some of the effects of stimulation on nerves, I wouldn't consider it out of the realm of possibility for it to be able to improve sleep quality, even for individuals that aren't deficient. Now, the third health benefit that we're gonna talk about today is possible improvements in memory, learning, and attention. Now, this research has only been performed in rodents at the moment. However, I do think it is one of the more interesting areas of research at the moment simply because uh, the NMDA receptor, uh, again, is a stimulatory receptor, meaning that when it's activated, uh, that it causes and induces a state of stimulation and plays a super important role in memory formation. And so typically you would expect something like uh, magnesium that is technically an NMDA antagonist to some degree to have somewhat of a suppressatory effect on memory. However, in these rodent studies, they've been finding the complete opposite of that. And they've been finding that when they superload these rats with a specific type of magnesium, uh, that it's actually improving memory formation. Now, the hypothesized mechanism here is that when magnesium is present, that it lowers the overall state of stimulation for the neurons that are in the brain and the central nervous system, so that when a stimulus does come, that those nerves are better ready to fire and perform their function. And there actually has been some research on this that has found that, uh, again, superloading magnesium in in amounts that are higher than what you would typically find in your diet actually raises the amplitude of the nerves that are firing, which is leading researchers to believe that there's some type of hormetic effect, meaning that magnesium is essentially suppressing nerve function. However, when a stimulus does come that's strong enough to overcome that threshold, that the amplitude of nerve firing that happens after that is actually around 50% greater than it would have typically been. Now, this is a great thing because it means that magnesium may be a great tool for individuals to both lower stress, anxiety, and even symptoms of depression while at the same time improving memory function and attention. 
Now, there are a few other health benefits that I do want to touch on that we're not going to go super in-depth in, but because of the magnitude of effect that magnesium has on these health parameters, I did think it would be prudent to add these in there. Now, the first health benefit that we're going to talk about super briefly is magnesium's effect on blood pressure. Now, this actually happens to be the most well-researched and backed health benefits of magnesium, and that is because of magnesium magnesium's essential role in fluid balance within the body. Now, it's probably good to think about electrolytes in the sense of wherever an electrolyte is within the body, water follows that. And so um, magnesium does a great job at kind of counteracting sodium's negative effect on blood pressure. Now, where sodium tends to stay in the bloodstream and draw fluid into the bloodstream to increase blood pressure, magnesium does a great job at pulling that same fluid out of the bloodstream in order to lower blood pressure. And so magnesium along with potassium do a great job, a fantastic job at improving blood pressure parameters by counteracting the negative effects of sodium on blood pressure. Now, the second health benefit that I also want to touch on super briefly is magnesium's beneficial effects on blood sugar regulation. Now, there are a handful of studies that have shown magnesium's ability to decrease blood sugar, decrease HbA1c, decrease insulin levels, and increase insulin sensitivity. Now, the mechanisms here are probably fairly multifaceted um, and are probably a combination of improved cell signaling as well as improved energy utilization. And as a side note, when it comes to energy utilization, there's actually a couple of different studies that have shown a fairly significant ability of magnesium to improve physical performance in elite level athletes. Now, again, this is probably multifaceted, meaning that there are several different mechanisms at play here, especially when it comes to magnesium's role as an electrolyte. However, magnesium's positive regulatory function on uh, glucose utilization is probably at play here as well. Now, the third health benefit that I wanna touch on super brief is magnesium's ability to improve bone health as well. And now because of magnesium's essential role as a dietary mineral, it joins the ranks of things like calcium and zinc, as well as vitamin D as being some of the most essential nutrients when it comes to bone health. Now, supplemental magnesium hasn't been looked at extensively when it comes to bone health. However, because of its role here, I did think it was important to point out here. But that's it, guys. That's all I have for you today. Now, again, if you're interested in either that free hormone PDF guide on how to improve testosterone productions via supplemental methods, or you're interested in joining that Facebook group that is, again, completely free, um, check out the description below. There's a link that you guys can follow to get access to both of those. If you guys like this video, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up down below as well as subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.